During the bitter winters and relentless downpours of World War II, soldiers didn't have the luxury of modern camping tarps or synthetic weatherproof fabric. Yet in the trenches and dugouts of Europe, a little-known innovation emerged. A grease curtain that could stop rain, wind, and even freezing drafts. It wasn't elegant, but it worked. The material wasn't metal, oilcloth, or rubberized canvas. It was made from layers of old wool blankets, melted animal fat, and the ingenuity of men who refused to freeze. This was the field expedient wall that soldiers relied on when everything else failed. And understanding how it worked can teach modern survivalists something about true resilience in the elements. The birth of the grease curtain came from pure necessity. In 1942, both Axis and Allied soldiers fighting in wet or freezing conditions quickly learned that regular canvas was useless once it became soaked. A single night of freezing rain could stiffen a tarp into a sheet of ice, and the damp air that crept through dugout walls could chill a man to the bone. Supplies were limited, so field engineers had to work with what they had, animal fats, woolen uniforms, and bits of discarded gear. The grease curtain began as a field improvisation on the Eastern Front. Soviet and German troops both developed similar methods independently, layering wool or felt and saturating it with melted fat or grease. When the fat cooled, it hardened into a wax-like seal that repelled water while remaining flexible enough to hang or fold. For soldiers digging into muddy hillsides or snow-packed embankments, this layer became the difference between a livable shelter and a death trap. The mixture of wool and fat created a natural waterproofing effect. The tiny fibres of wool trapped the grease within their weave, forming a semi-solid barrier that resisted both wind and water. Unlike tarps, which cracked or tore in freezing conditions, the grease curtain could be reheated, patched, or even eaten in emergencies, a grim but true account found in Soviet field manuals from 1943. A proper grease curtain started with several sheets of wool or felt. These could come from old uniforms, blanket scraps, or captured supplies. Soldiers would heat animal fat, often from pork, beef, or horse, in metal tins over a small stove or open flame. Once liquefied, the fat was brushed or poured over the cloth in layers, each one allowed to soak and cool before applying the next. When done properly, the result was a thick, pliable sheet that could be draped over dugout entrances, hung behind bunkers, or layered into roof coverings. The grease sealed the fibres together so completely that rain would bead and slide off, even under sustained storms. Soldiers also discovered that if they mixed a small amount of ash or soot into the final layer, the surface resisted insects and didn't reflect light, crucial for avoiding detection at night. In some German field notes, engineers described adding a top coat of resin or wax for long-term shelters, turning these grease-soaked blankets into, well, a crude form of field laminate. Others combined them with straw mats or planked wood for added insulation. These adaptations made dugouts significantly warmer and reduced condensation, allowing soldiers to keep their weapons and rations dry. Canvas was standard military issue, but it absorbed water quickly and became extremely heavy. Once saturated, it also conducted cold directly into the shelter. The grease curtain's advantage lay in its insulation. Wool already had air pockets that trapped warmth, and when sealed with fat, it became a thermal barrier that stopped convective drafts. 
It also resisted rot. Animal grease, when properly cured and protected from direct sunlight, preserved the fabric beneath it. Soldiers could fold and reuse the same sheet multiple times without it cracking, unlike rubberized canvas, which degraded under cold stress. Even shrapnel holes could be patched by reheating a bit of fat and spreading it into the tear. For soldiers in constant motion, this durability meant fewer supply replacements and better survival odds. On the Eastern Front, temperatures often dropped below minus 30 degrees Celsius, and even small gaps in a dugout could mean frostbite overnight. The grease curtain kept shelters warmer, quieter, and far less damp. Simple technology born from desperation, but refined through repetition. For modern bushcrafters and survivalists, the principle behind the grease curtain still applies. A similar method can be recreated using wool blankets and natural oils such as tallow, beeswax or even paraffin. To make one, you heat the oil until it liquefies, then soak or brush it into the fabric evenly while it's warm. Allow it to cool and harden before handling. Layering two or three treated blankets together can create a highly effective barrier for emergency shelters, especially when camping in cold, wet regions. The material not only blocks wind, but also retains body heat and reduces condensation inside tents or lean-tos. For a historical touch, a thin coat of wood ash mixed into the wax can darken the surface and add extra insect resistance much like wartime soldiers discovered by accident. This method has, you know, some really practical survival uses, especially in long-term off-grid setups where modern materials might degrade or tear over time. It can be used to line snow shelters, cover wood piles, or even reinforce tent flaps during freezing rain. While synthetic waterproofers certainly exist today, none are quite as self-repairing or biodegradable as a grease-treated wool barrier. The grease curtain stands for more than just a clever wartime hack. It really embodies a mindset of adaptation under extreme pressure, solving life-or-death problems with nothing but field scraps. It's honestly an overlooked example of how necessity drives innovation, even under the most brutal conditions. For anyone interested in survival history or primitive shelter design, understanding this method is a reminder that the best technologies often begin with human ingenuity and raw resourcefulness. For those experimenting with traditional materials, Recreating a small grease-treated panel can be, well, a fascinating hands-on project. It shows just how effective simple chemistry, fat and fibre, can be in keeping out the elements. And unlike synthetic tarps, this method teaches valuable lessons about insulation, sustainability and, of course, the science of staying dry. If this deep dive into forgotten World War II fieldcraft gave you new respect for old world ingenuity, remember to subscribe to In the Beginning for more rare historical survival methods and the forgotten technologies that kept soldiers alive when nature was the real enemy. Share this video with a fellow history enthusiast, because these lessons from the past honestly still have a lot to teach today.